It's time for Off the Radar Picks Against the Spread. It's college football week number eight. Let's go on and dive into it. All right. Of course, I'm your host, Gary Seegers, at GaryWCE on all the different socials. And it is Wednesday, October 16th. Hopefully, you're all having a wonderful, wonderful day. Uh, Let me tell you right quick, of course, like the video and subscribe to the channel if you would so kindly. And, of course, along with that, uh, do me a favor and check out bettingcfb.com. That is uh, your membership spot. I give out early picks. I give out statistical projections, uh, all kinds of different stuff over there, a lot of different graphs and graphics, and uh, and I just kind of give you a piece of my mind that I wouldn't normally put anywhere else. I think that's the easiest way to put it. So bettingcfb.com is the spot. I'm going to tell you more later about Three Dog Thursday, about Ticket Smarter, about Ghost Leaves, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so do me that favor and uh, and stick around. So we got 22 games that we're going to go over today. Hopefully you are all ready for that. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive into game number one. And our first game here is Duke and Florida State. Florida State heading to Durham for this one. All right, so Duke favored by three and a half here, total of 42 and a half on this one. And we'll look at the numbers here, as you can see. Uh, One, I've got it going under the 42 and a half uh, on this. So that's one thing. The other thing, um, Florida State, one, is 21 and 0 all time against Duke. They have never lost to the Blue Devils. Manny Navarro, Manny Navarro, Manny Diaz. Boy, I got to get, we're starting early today. I'm already having issues. Okay. Manny Diaz has got a defense here, and Duke is not great, especially on offense, but that defense is serious, and you were going up against Brock Glenn, who, yeah, looked okay against Clemson, but I really believe that they are going to be fired up for this thing in Durham. Uh, You look at all these numbers, this defense, good luck with Florida State trying to figure this thing out. Number six, PPA per pass allowed. Uh, number 43 PPA allowed per rush. Florida State still can't run the ball. Uh, they're not great in uh, in allowing havoc. I mean, they're number 90 in havoc rate allowed. Uh, Duke's defense is number 11. Like, this defense is serious. And on the offensive side of the ball, yeah, they can, they can sling it around a little bit. Malik Murphy isn't terrible. They're, they're not great at running the ball by any stretch of the imagination. But... You know, at least they don't turn it over or anything. I mean, that's that's one thing to pay attention to. Uh, turnover margin, they're number 50 in giveaways per game, number 46 in takeaways. And Florida State's number 81 in giveaways per game, number 128 in takeaways per game. So the defense does not generate turnovers whatsoever. Uh, yeah, this is... Everybody likes Florida State this week. I'm going to go against the grain. I found a three out there. You can get Duke minus three on this. I feel... Uh, I feel pretty good about that. So I'm going to take Duke minus three. We'll stay on Friday where Purdue is hosting Oregon on Friday evening. 27 and a half point favorites are the Ducks on the road. Total of 60 and a half. So that has actually gone up a couple of points. People seem to love this new uh, quarterback for Purdue. And I understand it. They've, uh, they've got a new offensive coordinator as well, so that's something to pay attention to. They certainly looked better in the second half against Illinois. How much of that was the dead cat bounce? How much of that was actual, legit Purdue is looking better? I, I wanted to go against everybody because everybody is betting Purdue here. Um, I wanted to go against everybody, but when you start to look at the schedule spot for Oregon, so I'm pulling it up now they uh they played at UCLA they got Michigan State on a Friday night they had Ohio State last week they've got at Purdue this Friday so it's a short week cross-country travel and then you got Illinois next week at Michigan Maryland at Wisconsin I mean it's just you know it's a grind in the Big Ten I wanted to go against it because uh, obviously my number here is Oregon minus 28.16 uh, but over the last four weeks, I've got Oregon minus five, which is bananas. Even still, the cross-country travel and everything, I, I'm i going to trust Purdue 
at home to maybe shorten this thing a little bit. I don't think Oregon really cares about getting margin. They haven't in any of the other games. Why would they hear? Uh, they understand that this is a, this is a grind. They're going to need all their players healthy. This is the don't get anybody hurt, let's get out of here with a win kind of game. I'll take Purdue plus the 27 and a half on this one. By the way, if you want these sheets, you can get them at bettingcfb.com. I, uh, I update them on that site every single week. Uh, so bettingcfb.com is 5 bucks a month, 50 bucks for the year. Do with it what you will. All right, we move on. Virginia heads to Clemson. Clemson, a 21.5 point favorite, total of 57.5. And, and my number on this is Clemson minus 22.13. Over the last four weeks, it's Clemson minus 27.24. And you look at this, and there is a decided advantage for Clemson really on both sides of the ball, uh, but more so on the offensive side where they have just been absolutely rolling under offensive coordinator Garrett Riley. Uh, Cade Klubnick is looking good, number 22 in predicted points added per pass. They're number 13 in passing success rate. Virginia's defense is number 93 in PPA allowed per pass. And on the other side, uh, Clemson number 6, predicted points added per rush. And Virginia's defense in that same metric is number 48. So Clemson on offense should be able to do kind of whatever they want to. On defense, the only weakness for Clemson, as you can see here, is number 70 in PPA allowed per pass. But Virginia isn't great at throwing it. They're number 75 in PPA per pass on offense. Number 107 in passing success rate. Uh, they can run, kind of. Uh, number 43 in PPA per rush for the Cavs. And... Uh, number 56 for Clemson's defense. You start looking at field position. You look at points per scoring opportunity, which Clemson's defense does not allow teams to really get into inside the opponent 40-yard line very often. Uh, they're number 44 in that metric, allowing, allowing five drives per game there. But they're number 109 in points allowed per scoring opportunity. The issue is that Virginia has not been very good at finishing drives. They're number 97, even though they get there uh, 32nd most in the country. On the other side, Clemson number 15 in points per scoring opportunity on offense. Virginia's defense is number 68. So Clemson, I think, could kind of name their score here. But remember, Tony Elliott used to be Dabo's offensive coordinator. I think he's got a soft spot for Tony Elliott. We're getting a hook here. That's the best number I could find. I'll take Virginia plus the 21 and a half. I think that this is not... Uh, a game that he's going to want to run it up very much because they've, they've certainly done that in other spots. Uh, they've got a bye week coming up after this. I don't think they're too worried about that. So give me Virginia plus the 21 and a half. The East Carolina Pirates head to West Point. Uh, and Army is a 15 and a half point home favorite here. This one opened at 17, 16 and a half somewhere. I think it was 17 uh, when I created the spreadsheet. It was 16 and a half. It's come down quite a bit. And if you look at why I think it's come down, the advanced stats show that East Carolina is actually, you know, pretty good against the run here. Uh, by the way, it's 15 and a half and 51 and a half is the total on this. Uh, I've got the total at 50. So slight difference on that. But, uh, but if you look, Army number two in PPA per rush, and East Carolina's defense is number 14 in PPA allowed per rush. They're number 12 in rushing success rate allowed. They're number one. Uh, Army is number one in rushing success rate. Army runs the ball 88% of the time. Um, and East Carolina has defended rushing plays 50, almost 52% of the time. My number on this still has Army by 24. My Stats based or stats model based on the last four weeks has got Army by 38.7, so almost 39 points. It's it's very tricky on this. One Army is so incredibly efficient, but if you look, they've played the number 133 strength of schedule in the country. East Carolina, however, has played the number 130 current strength of schedule in the country, so that is something to pay attention to. Uh, yet w the advanced stats show one thing, but. I mean, East Carolina just gave up like 300 yards rushing to um, to Charlotte. I'm trying to find. Good gracious, this is fantastic radio, fantastic podcasting. Uh, East Carolina. I know that the advanced stats say a certain thing, 
But man, when you start really diving into it, here we go, rushing. And here, 311 yards rushing to Charlotte. 5.98 yards per carry. Now, against Liberty, they gave up 191 on 45 carries. That's 4.24 yards per rush. Against UTSA, they gave up 170 on 38 carries. Now, before that, Norfolk State, Old Dominion, App State, yeah, it was less than around 2.3 yards per carry. But as of late, it's gotten worse. It's not great. Everybody wants to dive in on East Carolina. I still don't trust their offense, as you can see on the screen here. Number 112 in PPA per pass, number 117 in PPA per rush. Uh, maybe they've benched Jay Garcia and they are figuring out something new. But from what I can tell, there's not a huge difference. Uh, Jay Garcia, eight touchdowns, 12 interceptions. Caton Hauser, zero TDs, one interception. And, uh, and then Anthony Smith is a wide receiver. He's the only other one that's thrown a pass. I got nothing here. Like, I, I've i got to go Army, right? Because this is, why does everybody love East Carolina? So g give me Army minus 15 and a half on this and uh, make it make sense, right? All right, right quick, let me tell you, check out Three Dog Thursday on Thursday. Myself and TJ, he's still cleaning up from the mess that was the Hurricane uh, Milton last week. So we're going to have a good time on Three Dog Thursday tomorrow. It'll be... Uh, for me, it'll be a lot of fun. Hopefully, it is for him as well. We're going to try something new on there, so hopefully you'll stick around for that. Also, like I said, bettingcfb.com, all of these different stat projections, stat graphic sheets that you see, I put those on there. It's 5 bucks a month, 50 bucks for the year. Uh, you support a good cause, which is me, because I do all of this crap by myself. I don't have anybody else that helps me. It's just me. It's a one-man show. All these podcasts... Uh, all this kind of stuff, the videos, everything. I do it all. It's all me. So help me out. Do it to it. Bettingcfb.com. All right. We continue on, and uh, we'll move into game number six here. And that is going to take us to Northwestern and Wisconsin. So Wisconsin gets to travel up to the Windy City, and they are, at least at FanDuel, a 7.5-point favorite, total of 41.5. Uh, pretty much consensus, it is seven and a half right now. But you can find numbers on either side of this. So again, shop. Uh, do do yourself that favor. I've got Wisconsin favored by six point one seven based on stats from the full year. Uh, this Northwestern offense started to figure some stuff out last week against Maryland. Now certainly four turnovers helped uh, their cause there. Jake Lausch, I think, is the kid's name. Offense certainly looked better. Now you go by season stats. 132, et cetera. Like there's, there's something to be said for that. Uh, on defense, Wisconsin number 67 overall in PPA per pass. Northwestern number 81 passing success rate. Wisconsin's number 41, and Northwestern is number 121. Uh, and you can see that, of course, right here. Uh, neither team super explosive. Northwestern's not great at stopping explosive plays. Uh, Wisconsin's not great at generating them. Is what it is. Now, Northwestern is good at defending uh, rushing explosives, as you can see right there. But either way, um, Wisconsin appears to have figured something out over the past couple of weeks. I'm going to tend to trust that. Uh, based on the last four weeks of stats, Wisconsin minus 15 is my number. I think they're rolling right now. I think Braden Locke understands the offense. I think that their offensive line looks significantly better than they did they're getting some guys back that were banged up. Mm. I don't like betting against Northwestern, especially at home. However, I feel pretty strong about Wisconsin here. I'm going to take the Badgers to cover the seven on this one. And by seven, I mean that is the best number that I could find for it. So Wisconsin minus seven is, uh, is where we're going on that one. Game number six takes us out to Piscataway. That's right, New Jersey, where uh, Sunge or Rutgers, if you would like to call them that. Rutgers is a four-and-a-half-point favorite over UCLA. Uh, the total is 40-and-a-half on this, and it has not moved from where it was on Sunday. So that is interesting to know. This is an interesting spot because Rutgers did not look very good last week whatsoever. They got absolutely housed by Wisconsin, but maybe Wisconsin figured something out. 
Maybe. We'll see. We will see on that. UCLA, on the other hand, is not good. Uh, I, I will tell you that. Uh, UCLA, what have they gone through thus far? Looking at their schedule, this is the grind that they have done to this point. Indiana, at LSU, Oregon, at Penn State, Minnesota, and now at Rutgers. They are back across the country again. And this time they have to play at 12 Central, or excuse me, 12 at noon. And that ain't ideal because that is a 9 a.m. body clock game for a team that just had to fly across country. That in and of itself should be enough other than the fact that my full season numbers have got Rutgers favored by nine. Uh, based on the last four weeks, it's got them favored by 3.68. And you tack on a couple points there for travel, etc. The fact that it's a terrible schedule spot. And yeah, I, I believe that Rutgers is going to be able to cover the spread. Look at this UCLA offense. Number 110 PPA per pass. Rutgers defense is number 15. I mean, this is... There is no statistic where UCLA has a decided advantage. Even on defense, they're pretty good at stopping the run, but they're number 99 in rushing success rate allowed. They're number 31 in PPA allowed per rush, but they're number 99 in rushing success. So you look at the standard down numbers... And all of a sudden, standard down, like which is first and ten, uh, second and seven, or second and five, or whatever, uh, third and three, all that kind of like they are putrid in those. And I think that as bad as Rutgers offense has been, I think they can stay ahead of the chains here. I expect them to be able to cover this number. So uh, I will take Rutgers minus the four and a half on this. I feel feel pretty good about the Scarlet Knights being able to bounce back this week. The Wake Forest Demon Deacons head on up to Connecticut. That's right. Uh, stores, I believe. And this is a tricky one, right? Because you got a team that has obviously played better throughout the course of the season and another one that's, uh, that's starting to look a little bit better here as of late. But UConn is a one-and-a-half point home favorite here, total of 57 and a half. And this is a pretty big game at home for UConn. They're welcoming in an ACC opponent. No, Wake Forest is not a huge name team, but this is still a, uh, a proving ground, if you will, for the Huskies. You start to dive into these numbers, and Wake Forest's defense is about as bad as you can get. Their PPA allowed per drive, and PPA, by the way, predicted points added allowed per drive, number 132 in the country. There's 134 FBS teams. That's bad. Like, it's it's as close to the bottom as you can get. Number 133 in defensive success rate allowed. That is atrocious. Now, where there is a little bit of hope is on the offensive side of the ball, which obviously makes sense. Dave Clawson, the claw fence, you get how that works. They're number 70 in PPA per pass. Well, UConn is number 21 in PPA allowed per pass. Uh, they are number 10 in passing success rate allowed. And Wake Forest is number 96. Now, Wake, it looks like, can run the ball. Number 45 PPA per rush, number 25 rushing success rate. The problem is they only run the ball 42.9% of the time. And, of course, toss in the fact that UConn's defense is pretty good at stopping that, too. Now, you look at the strength of schedule, UConn has faced the number 114 current strength of schedule. Wake Forest, number 45. Wake has had to play Clemson. They had to play Ole Miss. They have been through it. However, sounds like Hank Bachmeyer still a little bit banged up. That's the quarterback for Wake Forest. If he is not ready to go, that could certainly uh, hurt things, right? Full season numbers, I've got UConn favored by 11.3. The last four weeks, stats have got Wake Forest favored by 11. I am going to go with the team that does not have the banged up quarterback, uh, Jim Mora is doing a pretty good job. The defense coordinator, Matt Brock. Gordon Samus is doing a good job. The offense coordinator there. I uh, I think UConn is just the better football team, and I'm only having to lay one and a half at home. Give me UConn minus the one and a half on this one. Arizona State goes to Cincinnati. Cincinnati a six and a half point home favorite, total of 49 and a half. And this one is... Very interesting. Sam Levitt, the quarterback for Arizona State, is uh, is out for this game. 
which is weird. I mean, he went back to the locker room in the last game, the win over Utah, and came back out, played the rest of the game. Jeff Sims only had two passes thrown in that game. It, but if Jeff Sims is going to be your quarterback, then, yeah, I mean, this thing moved from since he minus two and a half all the way up to six and a half. And, uh, well, I mean, it makes sense, right? Because Jeff Sims is like the walking turnover. That's what happened with him at Nebraska. Now, maybe Kenny Dillingham has had some success with him. I'm going to doubt it, though. This is the third uh, third team that he has started for. Uh, Georgia Tech, of course, where he was last year at Nebraska, and now he's at uh, Arizona State. But maybe, maybe something good has happened. Uh, my number on this was Arizona State minus .35. Based on the last four weeks, it was Cincy minus .2. I mean, it's just, it's as pick em as you can get. It is pick em, pick em, pick em. And yet, when you take out that quarterback, then all of a sudden it becomes uh, kind of tricky because you you don't know if you can trust him. I will tell you, I bet on Nebraska so many times last year when Sims was the starter, and um, and it cost me. So in this situation, I'm certainly going to go against that. Uh, since he... They can throw the ball. Number 27 in PPA per pass. They didn't look great last week. Soresby overall on the season, though, has had a really good season. They're number seven in passing success rate. Uh, Arizona State's defense is number 73. The strength for Cincinnati's offense goes against the weakness of Arizona State's defense, and the weakness of Cincy's offense goes against the strength of Arizona State's defense. So matchup-wise, this is not good for the Sun Devils. On the other side, yes, Cincy's defense is not great, at stopping the run, but they are okay. They don't allow explosives. They're number 26 in rushing explosiveness allowed. They're not great on stuff rate. They are okay as far as standard down success rate. Number 70, Arizona State, number 19. They can stay ahead of the change. Remember, Kenny Dillingham can change up an offense in no time. So potentially they don't. I'm going to change this. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change my pick on this. Dillingham is one of the smartest son of a guns out there. Last year, I think it was the UCLA game. What did they run? Like an, an old wing T or something? I mean, it was the craziest offense you've ever seen. Nobody knew what the hell to do with it. Yeah, mid mid pick. I had already written down what I was going to do. Uh, screw it. I'm going to Arizona State. They have plenty of time to figure out what they're going to do with Jeff Sims. And Jeff Sims is an athlete, so he will be able to do something. Uh, looking at the current number on this, uh, let's see, Cincy, Arizona State. Now, granted, this is uh, an early game for Arizona State. This is a, a noon Eastern time game. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I'm looking at this, and Arizona State, best number we can get right now is... Da, 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 da. Oh, people are starting to figure it out. People are starting to figure it out. Oh, no. Okay, best number we can get out there is a six right now. Uh, the thing has moved from the six and a half that it was at FanDuel. Most everybody has it five and a half now. I've got one six out there. Where is the six? Bet Rivers, Sugar House. Let's see. Who is that? Four wins casino. I can I can get down at Bet Rivers. Okay. All right. There's so there's a there's a few options. All right. Let's make it let's make it easy. Arizona State is changing quarterbacks. I don't think it's going to be as big of a deal because Kenny Dillingham is maybe one of the smartest head coaches that's out there, at least on the offensive side of the ball. Give me Arizona State plus six on that one. Um, yeah, bettingcfb.com to see the full. The full sheet, if you want to dig into it. <laughs> I spent too long on that last game. All right. Notre Dame is headed down to Atlanta, and Georgia Tech is going to host them inside Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Okay. I saw that they're going to start hosting Georgia inside Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Why? Do we need more NFL stadiums in college football? No. You're killing me. You're killing me, Smalls. Anyway, all right, so Notre Dame is currently an 11.5-point favorite on the road here. 
This thing opened at eight and a half. It steamed up as soon as people started to realize that ah, Haynes King might not play. And even if he does play, he's not going to be 100%. We know that, right? So let's start diving into some of the stats. I mean, just the ESPN strength of record tells you that Notre Dame is number 15. Georgia Tech is number 45. My power ratings have Notre Dame at number six. They are incredibly efficient this year. And Georgia Tech is number 40. Now, I understand I saw the Northern Illinois game. I know. Everybody wants to write Notre Dame off. My number on this is Notre Dame minus 14. That is regardless of whether Haynes King plays or not. My spread, based on the last four weeks of stats, has Notre Dame by 31. That is an insane number. I will freely admit that this is crazy. However, looking at it, uh, Georgia Tech... Their strength is passing the ball. Now, they don't do it very often, only 43% of the time, as you can see here. Uh, but Notre Dame's defense is number one in PPA allowed per pass, predicted points added per pass. Uh, passing success rate, Notre Dame's defense is number one. On the other side of the ball, obviously, Buster Faulkner is going to be able to figure out some things as far as running the ball because they do have dudes there. They're number 37 in PPA per rush, number 17 in rushing success rate. That is where you can get at Notre Dame. Notre Dame is number 90 in rushing success rate allowed, but they're number 18. They don't allow explosives. So you're going to have to stay ahead of the chains. You look at Standard Down's PPA, Standard Down success, they're pretty even. Very, very tricky here, right? Standard Down success rate, number 16. Yeah, so that means that uh, you're going to have to be put in passing downs which is, you know, second and long, third and long, second and more than five, uh, third and more than three. At that point, you got to pass the ball. And, yeah. Now, what what really sucks for Georgia Tech is they had a quarterback that was number four in passing down success rate, number eight in passing down, sorry, and number 17 in passing downs PPA. So predicted points added per pass on those. All right. Notre Dame's offense. They can run the hell out of the ball. Number seven. In PPA per rush, only number 65 in rushing success rate, but they are number two in rushing explosiveness. Uh, offensive line yards, they're fairly decent. Georgia Tech has done a really good job. Tyler Santucci, the defensive coordinator that's come in from Georgia Tech, he taught these dudes how to tackle almost immediately, and they play sound, fundamental defense. The problem that I've got here is I think that Notre Dame is just better across the board. They've got more talent. They're just a significantly better football team overall. So uh, my total on this was 55, so I've got the total going over. I don't know if I would touch that without knowing about Haynes King. Uh, I would take Notre Dame to cover the 11.5 here. Uh, best number I could find was actually Notre Dame minus 11 on that. I'm not even to the halfway point, and I'm already almost 30 minutes in. I've got to go faster. Michigan goes to Illinois. Illinois, a three and a half point home dog right now. Total of 43 and a half on this one. My number on it is Michigan minus 1.47. But if you look at stats over the past four weeks, my number would be Michigan minus 10. If you took out what has happened in weeks, uh, good gracious, one through three. So four, five, six, seven. You look at those weeks and you got Michigan favored by a lot more. Jack Tuttle it certainly seems like a better option at quarterback for Michigan. Uh, now, obviously, Luke Altmaier is pretty good, but you're going up against a Michigan defense that's really good against the run, and you would think at some point is going to show up against the pass. If they can't, this Illinois offense is number 11 in PPA per pass, Michigan's defense 64, number 48 in passing success rate, and then number 24 in passing explosiveness. You can thank Zachary Franklin, former UTSA wide receiver for that. Of course, he joined Barry Lunny, the offensive coordinator at Illinois there. Uh he went from UTSA to Illinois. Zachary Franklin went from UTSA to Ole Miss to Illinois. The kid's an absolute stud. They've got dudes on that side. Now, the other part of this is the fact that Illinois' defense is absolutely putrid against the run. They're number 117 in rushing success rate. They're number 103 in PPA per rush. Uh, Illinois is number five at rushing explosiveness allowed, which means they don't allow you to break off a bunch of big runs. But what they do is allow you to beat them by a thousand paper cuts and Michigan is certainly totally fine with that they are they are great at just grinding this thing out you look at plays per game Michigan is number 124 in the country they only run 60 offensive snaps per game 
That is what they would like to do. Uh, on the other side, Illinois, kind of the same thing. Number 94. They run 64 offensive snaps per game. Very, very interesting. Uh, Illinois, not great in defensive red zone conversion percentage. Uh, that's not good because you would like to be able to hold Michigan to field goals. I I know a lot of people have already jumped on this. They steamed it out a little bit, but it's come back down just a touch. Once it got to that hook, there was some buyback on Illinois. I am going to take Michigan minus three. That is the best number that you can get out there currently. That's what I'm going to take. So Michigan minus the three, and um, and I feel good about it. There's actually a couple of threes out there. So do your shopping, and you will be able to find it. All right, right quick. You want to save some money. I know that you do, because I like to save money as well. Why not do it at Ticketsmarter.com? That is the easiest way to go and do it. Use the promo code WCE10. That's going to get you 10 bucks off an order of $100 or more. WCE20 is going to get you 20 bucks off an order of $300 or more. Everything is expensive these days. Going to college football games, going to NFL games, NBA games, etc. You want to go see a concert? Ticketsmarter.com has all of these things, and you can use that promo code every single time. It's not a one-time sign-up bonus whatever thing. You can use it every single time that you want to buy tickets to something. So, you know, like I said, use the promo code WCE10, WCE20. That's going to help us out tremendously. But uh, but Ticket Smarter treats us well. They will treat you well. I will guarantee it. Uh, Think smarter, Ticket Smarter, and the Ticket Smarter mobile app. All right. What else do I need to put out here? Oh, like the video. Subscribe to the channel. You know, all those wonderful things. I would certainly appreciate that. Now we get back to the games. And we got a fun one here. I've had a lot of people ask me about this game. There's been more talk about the service academies this year. I swear. I swear to you. Uh, but here we go. Let's uh, let's hit into it. The Charlotte 49ers. They head to uh, Navy. The midshipmen. The service academies. I'm all in on it. All in on it. Navy is a 17, sorry, a 16 and a half point home favorite at FanDuel right now. That might be the cheapest number that you can find. It, 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 never mind. It's consensus. 16 and a half across the board. Topping back to 17 in a couple of spots now. Hi, yay, yay. Okay, so anyway, um, Navy looks great. They are fantastic. You look at these numbers here, which, by the way, you can get these, uh, these sheets, bettingcfb.com. Go check it out. All right, so Navy, a 21-point favorite based on the last four weeks of stats. Navy, a 24-point favorite based on the full season. How Charlotte has won three ball games this year with these kind of advanced stats, I will never understand. I don't get it. They're number 113 in PPA per pass on offense, number 73 in PPA per rush on defense. Sorry, not on defense, on offense. PPA per rush, PPA per pass. On defense, number 99 in predicted points added allowed per pass. They're number 113 in predicted points added allowed per rush. Navy is one of the most efficient teams in all of college football. They're number four in predicted points added margin. Their defense is not outstanding by any stretch of the imagination. And Charlotte did run... Uh, quite a bit on East Carolina last week. They might have success running on Navy here. But so long as that thing don't go over 17, I would feel good with Navy on this because you start to look at field position. You start to, just looking at the five factors rank, right? And that's Bill Conley's thing. Google it, five factors of college football. It's all about efficiency. Um Navy is number one in the country in raw five, uh, f- excuse me, raw five factors. Number one to number 114 for Charlotte. Navy is number 26 when you do five factors plus talent. And Charlotte is number 107. So Charlotte has a distinct advantage as far as talent goes. They're number 65 in the 2417 talent composite. Navy is number 133 in that metric. But Navy has been so good. Blake Horvath is unbelievable. So. Who am I to go against this? I mean, you, you see Charlotte is 3-3 three and three against, the, uh, against the spread. Navy is 4-1. and one. This Navy team is fantastic. They're fantastic. I'm not 
Who are you to go against the troops, right? Give me Navy. Give me Navy minus 16 and a half, uh, minus 17, if that's the number you can find. Don't go over that. If it goes over that, don't bet it. Simple enough. All right, we got an ACC banger in Berkeley. And if you guys believe me, I really appreciate you. NC State is going all the way out to California to take on the Cal Golden Bears. Cal is currently a nine and a half point favorite, but this thing is all over the place. I mean, it's just, it's moving like crazy. It's going back and forth. Who even knows? Uh, I, I found an NC State plus 10 and a half. I did find a Cal minus nine. So it's just shop for your numbers. But right now we're using the FanDuel line. We're going to say Cal is favored by nine and a half with a total of 46 and a half on this one. And first off, my total would have it going over, but ever so slightly because I've got the total at 49.89. This travel situation for Cal has just been brutal. Absolutely brutal. Let's uh, First, let me tell you about that because, good gracious. Uh, so they host Miami two weeks ago and lose just in yeah terrible, terrible spot. Then they went and played at Pitt last week. They got NC State coming in this week. Then they got Oregon State. They've got to buy. Then they have to go to Wake, Syracuse, Stanford, and at SMU. So, But before that, I mean, it was rough. UC Davis at Auburn. San Diego State at home at Florida State. Took a bye week, got Miami at home at Pitt. Like, they're just flying cross country all the time. And now they have to fly all the way back home to take on an NC State team that has not been very good. NC State number 71 in PPA margin this year. C.J. Bailey... Uh, Honestly, does not look that bad at quarterback for NC State. Something to pay attention to. But this NC State team is not, they ain't great by any stretch of the imagination. This is not a vintage Dave Doran football team. So let's take a look at it. They're actually number 59 in offensive success rate thus far. They're number 43 in passing success rate. Now in defense, that's where it's been an issue, which you would not expect that at all from a Tony Gibson defense. Uh, they are number 107 in PPA per rush allowed. Uh, they're number 99 in rushing success rate allowed. It's just not been good at all. And I don't know what's what's happening there. Cal is not great at running the football. Um, this is offense. I'm looking at the wrong damn thing. It, 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 the number still stands. Number 88 in PPA allowed per rush. They're number 50 in rushing success rate on defense. They're number 126 in rushing explosiveness, which... Cal is number 54 in that metric. So Cal isn't great at running the ball. Number 118 in PPA per rush. But they are pretty good at throwing the ball. That happens to be the one thing that NC State is somewhat decent at. They're not great, uh, but they're okay. Like passing success rate allowed. They're number 110, but Cal is number 76. This just, you know what? These are two average football teams. And NC State is 0-6 against the spread so far this year. Cal is 4-2. One thing, there are two different things that I know about Cal football, under, at least under Justin Wilcox, right? Always bet on Wilcox as a double-digit dog. Always. Two-thirds of the time, you were going to win that bet. On the other side, always bet against him as a favorite, especially a double-digit favorite. So you see the number on here. I've got Cal by 7.44. My last four stats up there, you got Cal minus 5.71. Like it's even tighter than that recently. You see it right up at the top up there. Just right over there. I'm going to go with NC State. I know they hadn't covered a spread that, so, yeah, so far this season. But they will. Nobody goes over against the number. So give me the NC State. Best number I can get out there right now is plus 10 and a half. Yeah, I'll take them. I'll take them odds. I don't care that they're going across the country. I feel good about this. Give me Dave Doran and C.J. Bailey. If I'm going to fit this inside of an hour, I've got to quit screwing around. So let's go ahead and get to it. Houston headed to Kansas, and this one is tricky. It's in Kansas City. It's in uh, Arrowhead Stadium. Kansas right now is a five-and-a-half point favorite with a total of 47-and-a-half on this one. My number likes Kansas minus 9.33. Stats based over the last four weeks has got Kansas minus 16.499. Kansas 0-6 against the spread, and they are 1-5 overall. And this team is not that bad. They're number 59 in PPA margin. 
The defense ain't been great by any stretch. Now, Houston's defense, I think, could legitimately be great eventually, but they ain't, they ain't there right now. All right, so Kansas, looking at what they have been through as far as their schedule, um, they just had a bye week, and that's a, that's a huge, huge thing. We now have on film what Zeon Chris was, was capable of doing for Houston's offense this whole time. Uh, they absolutely put it on TCU, and, you know, now it looks like Kansas has something to do with that, but, uh, but also Houston coming off of by as well. So no rest advantage, no schedule advantage, no nothing for either one of these teams. And when you look at it, I think I said on the BetUS College Football Show that, uh, that yeah, I mean, you got to go Houston here. I, I would lean Houston. But I start diving into this, and, and yes, I see all the red as far as Houston's offensive numbers, but they did better under Chris at quarterback. And this is a such a fun coaching matchup, right? Willie Fritz and Lance Leipold. But, that, I mean, the Kansas defense is bad. The, the other side of the ball... I think that they I think Kansas after the bye week can figure some stuff out. They're at home. They are desperate for a win. I'm gonna trust my numbers. Like I I think that Kansas is playing well enough to be able to get a win here. Uh I think maybe we don't see a turnover this time. So give me Kansas minus five and a half. I'll uh, I'll trust them to be able to pull this thing out at home. The Washington State Cougars host the Hawaii Warriors and Hawaii, uh, an 18 and a half point dog on the road here. Total of 54 and a half on this one. And my numbers uh, don't really like Washington State a lot. Washington State minus five over the past four weeks. Full season has got Washington State by close to 17 points. Hawaii, a lot of travel. They got absolutely demolished in the second half against Boise State last week. Um, but they, you know, they've already had two bye weeks. They're just they're rested. They're kind of chilling. Um, this one is an interesting time slot game, uh, at least according to when it's actually being played on the CW. So something to pay attention to with that. Uh, anyway, focusing on the stats, uh, Hawaii's defense is like not terrible, but like not good either. They're number 81 in PPA margin. Washington State, number 63. Uh, this Hawaii team was very, very close to covering the spread against Boise last week, and they kept that a ball game for a long time until the avalanche hit really into the fourth quarter. Uh, for now, I, I see all of this, and Washington State better at field position, better in turnovers, better in uh, penalties per game. All of these little fundamental things start to pile in and you see that Washington State there, I've got them at number 38 in five factors plus talent rank. Hawaii, I've got at number 101. So while my number doesn't quite get there, and especially over the last four weeks, it shows that Hawaii's actually improved. I, well, what number can we get? I can, I can get Hawaii at 19 and a half right now. And I think that's the direction that I'm going to go. Because I think that Washington State has got bigger fish to fry. And, of course, you see the numbers. Like, it shows that Hawaii has improved. I had, I had really talked myself into uh, Washington State here. But I'm going, to, I'm going to go with Hawaii. I'm going to talk myself out of this. Uh, because I can get a 19 and a half at a couple of different books. Okay. Let's see what Washington State has got going on as far as a schedule goes. Washington State, uh, let's see, at Fresno last week, they play Hawaii this week, they play at San Diego State next week, and then they've got another bye week. Yeah, this is, they don't care about this game, I don't think. They're going to win. I fully expect Washington State to win. I don't think they cover. Give me Hawaii plus 19 and a half. I'll, uh, I'll take that. Prime time, Neon Dion taking his bunch of Colorado Buffaloes over to Tucson, Arizona to take on the Wildcats. And Arizona is a three and a half point home favorite here, total of 58 and a half. We did find out that Travis Hunter is going to be back this week. Joe Horn Jr. is going to be back this week. So that is pretty big news for that bunch. Uh, you start to look at the numbers. I've got Colorado favored by six on this. I think that it opened up as Arizona a, 
a favorite because we didn't know what was going on with the injury situation. They still got some other guys that might be out. But at least if you got these dudes, you got Will Shepard, you got Travis Hunter, uh, you got Joe Horn, you got a you got a full roster. Wester, I think he's playing. I mean, it, they're they're going to be all right. My stat based on the last four weeks spread is uh, is Colorado minus fifteen. Colorado has played a lot better as of late. They are number forty five in PPA allowed per drive on defense. Number 33 in predicted points added allowed per play. Uh, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. In Arizona, surprisingly, I mean, you just start looking at this. Number 35 PPA margin, Arizona number 79. And I know that this game is at home for Arizona, but they, they've they just not been very good. And some of the wins that they've gotten have come against less than stellar competition. They got the win over Utah, but... It was the backup quarterback. I mean, what do we think about this? Like, I, I know they're at home. I get it. I like Colorado here. I think what Colorado's got going on is legit. Like, they, yes, they put a lot into that game last week. But, man, I thought that they were going to get absolutely blown out when they went to UCF, and they turned that thing around and it just absolutely smoked UCF. Now, I do think that Arizona is better than UCF. But that doesn't mean that I don't think Colorado is going to win the game. So give me Colorado to uh, to cover the three and a half here. We're going to write that thing down. That's the best number I can find. Uh, yeah, I feel good about it. That total of 58 and a half, uh, it's gone up. My projected spread total here is like 46. I don't know what's going on with that. Um, but I've never claimed to be a totals guy. That's the way that that goes. Uh, y'all do me a favor, like the video, subscribe to the channel, of course. Subscribe to the Winning Cures Everything podcast as well. And check out bettingcfb.com. That's where you can get all of these different stat sheets that you're seeing on the screen, uh, along with a bunch of other bonus content that I do on a weekly basis. I work myself uh, into the ground weekly covering college football because I love the sport. It's a lot of fun. So if you want to support me, support this channel growing, uh, maybe I can hire somebody to start editing videos, all that kind of stuff that would... Uh, That'd be fun. That'd be, that'd be very helpful. Uh, so I'm not staying up until 2 o'clock in the morning most nights. Anyway, carrying on, we move to James Madison heading to Georgia Southern. And this one's in Statesboro. James Madison, a 9.5 point favorite on the road, total of 58.5 here. Uh, and that total has come down from 60.5. And, and I get it because I had it at 51.6. So this one moved with me. I've got James Madison favored by 11.5 points here. Um their defense, obviously, as you can see, is fantastic. Number seven in defensive PPA allowed per drive. Number two per play. They are number one in defensive success rate. They're good stopping the run. They're good stopping the pass. It doesn't matter. Their defense is awesome. On offense, it's kind of tricky. Barnett, the uh, the quarterback for him, has been uh, hit or miss in some spots, right? It, or boom or bust. How about that? Although not necessarily a bust. He's not been bad. He's just, he's very average, but man, he can explode sometimes. I'll say that. I'll say that. Uh, Georgia Southern's defense is not good. And they had a backup quarterback that came in and scored three touchdowns in six minutes against Marshall last week. The offense is okay, but you look at my spread based on the last four weeks of stats, and I've got James Madison by like 24 points. I know that ULM happened. I know it, but I trust James Madison. I like Bob Chesney. I think he's an incredible coach. Georgia Southern has played a way better strength of schedule than James Madison, and I still like James Madison here. So give me give me JMU, J Mad uh, at minus nine and a half on this one. And by God, we got to pick up the pace. Ball State travels to Vandy. Vandy, a 25.5 point home favorite, total of 58.5. Like I said, we are going fast on uh, on these last few. You look through here, Vanderbilt. Uh, all that needs to be said here, really, is that with Diego Pavia, you always bet on him as a double digit underdog. If Vanderbilt is favored, you bet against him, right? And I didn't learn about that, I should have known it. But my God, this Vanderbilt team had looked really, really good the first couple of weeks of the season. Week three, they go down to Georgia State, and they toss up an egg. Now, they still probably should have won the game, 
but they were never going to cover that 10 and a half or 10 or whatever it was. In this situation, 25 and a half, it, it, Ball State is not good. You can see they're number 132 in PPA margin. This is not a good football team. However, this is a sandwich spot if I have ever seen one. Vanderbilt just beat Alabama at home. They just beat Kentucky on the road. And now they got Ball State at home the week before they host Texas. And by God, if they win this and Texas wins their game against Georgia, college game day could be in Nashville next week. I mean, what are you doing with Ball State? Do you care about this game? Like, I wouldn't. Total is 58 and a half. I've got the projected total at 51. Uh, I think that this game's just going to be... It's what it is. I mean, my, you see my total, or my uh, my number on it. I've got Vanderbilt by 25. Over the past four weeks, I've got Vandy by 18. Ball State's offense is starting to pick up a little bit. I don't think they're going to be able to do much against Vanderbilt's defense. Granted, Vandy's defense isn't great by any stretch of the imagination, but they are good enough, and this Vanderbilt offense, now Pia, uh, De- yeah. <laughs> Diego Pavia uh, was kind of banged up at the end of last week. You don't want him to get hurt in a game like this, right? You want to save him for some of these bigger games, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, I will take Ball State to cover the 25 and a half, and I wish that I'd gotten a 26 uh, or more earlier in the week. We got a Big 12 battle here as West Virginia welcomes the Kansas State Wildcats to Morgantown, and Kansas State currently a three and a half point favorite consensus, uh, total of 55 and a half on this. Like I said, we are moving, absolutely moving. Uh, spread based on the last four weeks of stats, I've got Kansas State by 3.3 points. Based on the full season, I've got Kansas State by 4.5 points. This thing was at 2.5. It has moved up a little bit. Let's uh, let's take a look at where the mismatches are. Kansas State, really good at stopping the run. That is what West Virginia does best on offense. However, West Virginia can sling it around a little bit. They're number 44 in predicted points added per pass. Well, Kansas State's secondary is questionable, or as the kids would say, sus right uh defense is number 109 in ppa allowed per pass passing success rate allowed kansas state number 82 west virginia is number 39 west virginia wants to run the ball they run it about 56 percent of the time uh but kansas state's really good at stopping that they're not good at defending the pass so i would imagine we're going to see the mountaineers throw the ball a little bit on the other side what west virginia is best at is stopping the run that happens to be what uh kansas state does best However, Kansas State is also not terrible at throwing the ball. They're number 30 in passing success rate, number 51 in PPA per pass. In those metrics, West Virginia's defense is number 129 and number 113. We we have a mismatch, and I know this thing's at night, but Kansas State is as battle-tested on the road in weird late-night environments as any team in the country. They have already been to Tulane. They have already been to Provo, Utah. They have already been to Boulder, and now they're going to Morgantown. This ain't nothing they ain't ever seen before. So I will take Kansas State. The best number you can find right now looks like Kansas State minus three. That is the direction that we are going to go with this one. We got a classic Big Ten battle for this one. As uh, as Michigan State welcomes Iowa to East Lansing, and Iowa currently is a five-and-a-half point road favorite here total of 40 and a half on this one this is a a tricky tricky spot to figure out because Michigan State is coming off of a bye if I'm not mistaken and uh, and Iowa has looked really good as of late Uh, obviously they played Iowa State not Iowa State Ohio State and could not get it done there but is what it is yeah Michigan State coming off of a bye and didn't look great against Oregon but In other spots, they've been okay, especially against similar competition. Iowa, on the other hand, that is uh, something tricky to pay attention to with the schedule spot for them. If I can find it, this is great podcasting. Uh, Michigan State, this weekend, they played Washington last weekend. They played at Ohio State. There was a bye before that. They've already been through Minnesota, Troy, Iowa State, Illinois State. The schedule sets up. It just opens up. Opens up for Iowa. It's fantastic, really, when you look at it. Uh, the numbers, Iowa's defense should turn over Aiden Childs numerous times, numerous times. Michigan State is number 122 in interceptions thrown per pass. Uh, Iowa's defense is number 36 in that. Uh, Michigan State is number 125 in fumbles lost per rush. 
Yeah, 125, like real close to the bottom. Iowa's defense is number 20. So Iowa is great at collecting those things. You're, you're looking at Michigan State number 119 in turnover margin. Iowa number 15. This is – Iowa's number one in penalties per game. So they, they have the fewest in the country. Uh, Michigan State is number 91. They're number 114 in penalty yards per game. It, it, Iowa does all the efficient stuff that you were supposed to. My number on it has Iowa close to uh, favored by 10. Over the past four weeks, I would have Iowa by 17. I know Michigan State is coming off of the bye, but there's a lot of love for Michigan State in the market right now, and I don't get it. I don't understand it. I'm going to go the opposite direction on the road here. I will take Iowa minus the five and a half in East Lansing. Ah, uh, yes, a classic American uh, Atlantic Coast Conference matchup here. <laughs> Both of these teams obviously so close to the Atlantic Coast. Uh, Stanford is hosting SMU, and as it sits, SMU is a 15-and-a-half-point road favorite here, and the total is 54-and-a-half on this one. Now, I would have the total a little lower, so it opened at 55-and-a-half. It's down to 54-and-a-half. I have it around 53, so it makes sense. My number on this has SMU favored by 19 points. It has SMU by 23 over the past four weeks of stats. Uh, SMU is a decidedly better team. Now, Stanford has played a much stronger strength of schedule. SMU played number 67 current strength of schedule. SMU, uh, sorry, Stanford has played the number five current strength of schedule. Like, they have really been through the gauntlet here. Uh, did not look good against Notre Dame last week. I think that is putting it mildly. They were atrocious on that. Uh, and the crazy part is that Stanford's defense we thought was pretty good against the run, right? Number 68 in PPA allowed per rush, number 81 in rushing success rate allowed, uh, 27 in offensive line yards, number 10 in stuff rate, and yet uh, Notre Dame just kind of did whatever they wanted to with them. So, you know, it is what it is. You look at the five factors plus talent rank, which is basically just like an efficiency, overall efficiency metric. How explosive are you? How often do you turn the ball over or allow yourself to uh, be put in a position to turn the ball over? Uh your success rate, all that kind of stuff, all wrapped up in one neat, tiny little package there. And I've got Stanford at number 105, and I've got SMU at number 16. I mean, it ain't good. It don't look good for Stanford. I know they're at home, and I know SMU had to travel, and I don't care. I think SMU is the significantly better football team. 15 and a half is way too low. Uh, give me the Mustangs to cover the 15 and a half on the road in Palo Alto. Stanford, I'm sorry. You know, it is what it is. I am not going to make it inside the hour. It is what it is. Uh, it's a long podcast, and I'm doing 22 games. That's more than usual. All right, we move on. UNLV heads to Oregon State, and this is the first time I think UNLV has gone to Oregon State. So tricky, tricky spot for uh, for these guys. All right, UNLV is favored by seven and a half right now, which is a lot of points, but it does kind of make sense because this team has looked really, really good. As you can see on the screen, they're number 23 in PPA margin. Uh, the total on this, by the way, is 61 and a half. I mean, it's a lot of points. A lot of points we're expecting offense in this one. UNLV is number 23 in predicted points added margin. Uh, Oregon State is number 78 in predicted points added margin. Oregon State better on offense. Defense is not so good. Obviously, that's not what you want when you were going up against a team like UNLV with that go-go offense from Brennan Marion. But um, Oregon State, I do think, is good enough to be able to run the ball. And you, as you can see, they're number 14 in PPA per rush on offense. I think they will be able to move it on UNLV. This is a, I mean, Racer Stadium is serious. This is the place, I mean, it's nightmare fuel for opponents. I know Oregon State isn't great this year, but they're still okay. This is not a terrible football team. Uh, and I know UNLV has been awesome. I know that. But when I look at this, I mean, Oregon State right now, um, they they played Colorado State. They lost at Nevada last week. But now they're coming back home off of a loss. They're going to be fired up. UNLV, you look at their schedule. And, uh, and, yeah, they have played Fresno State, a loss to Syracuse at Utah State. And now they've got at Oregon State the week before – they play Boise State at home. A little bit of a look-ahead spot maybe for UNLV, who wants to win the Mountain West. This is not a Mountain West game. 
There's a bit of a look ahead. You see my numbers. My numbers like UNLV by a point on the last four weeks. It's got UNLV by five. That is still not seven and a half. I think that's a crazy number. Uh, yes, some of the advanced stats certainly don't look good for Oregon State, but that's still a tough place to play. So I will um, I will take Oregon State plus the seven and a half on this one. All right, we move on, and this is the last game of the day. TCU heads to Utah, so Salt Lake City for the Horned Frogs. And uh, Utah favored by four and a half right now, total of 49 and a half. I think that it was announced that Cam Rising is done for the season. I believe that's what uh, is has been put out there. So this is going to be um, the Wilson kid, Isaac Wilson. So it's going to be his team from here on. I think that could be a good thing. Cam Rising certainly did not look good last week when they went to Tempe. Uh, but Utah still good on the defensive side of the football. My number on this has Utah minus 1.35. Based on the last four weeks, it's got Utah by five. TCU's offense is pretty good, but Utah's defense is better. TCU, looking at their offense, they can throw the ball. They cannot run it. And throwing the ball, they are going against the strength of the Utah defense. Utah is number 44 in Havoc created. TCU number 37 in Havoc allowed. And if you're not going to be able to run the ball, I think that Utah is just going to be able to pin their ears back and, and go after uh, Hoover, when I look at this, number 44 in five factors plus talent rank for Utah, number 53 for TCU. So these are two pretty, like relatively close teams. The issue for me is I think that TCU, now they've been to some hostile environments and whatnot. Salt Lake City is just a little bit different. There's something about playing these night games there, these late games. Uh, Utah is really, really good in these spots. And now you're letting Wilson have the team. It is his team now. I think they're going to run the ball with a purpose. Uh, yeah, I'm going to trust that Utah is able to uh, get this thing done. So TCU, for whatever reason, they just, they're one and five against the spread. Now Utah is two and four, but TCU three and three overall, one and five against the number. They've just underperformed in these kind of spots a lot. I'm going to trust Utah to get it done at home. So give me Utah minus the four and a half on this one. All right, so let's go ahead and do our recap real quick. 22 different games. I've got Duke minus three, Purdue plus 27 and a half, Virginia plus 21 and a half, Army minus 15 and a half, Wisconsin minus seven, Rutgers minus four and a half, UConn minus one and a half, Arizona State plus six, Notre Dame minus 11, Michigan minus three, Navy minus 16 and a half, uh, NC State plus 10 and a half, Kansas minus five and a half, Hawaii plus 19 and a half, Colorado plus three and a half, James Madison minus nine and a half on the road, Ball State plus 25 and a half, Kansas State minus three, Iowa minus five and a half, SMU minus 15 and a half, Oregon State plus seven and a half, and Utah minus four. That is going to do it. Uh, don't forget to check out ghostsleeves.com slash WCE, the best kinesiology compression sleeves on the market. Uh, you get 15% off when you use WCE as your promo code. So uh, so check it out. There's a link in the description for that. Uh, as well as, of course, Ticket Smarter. You guys know what to do with that. The promo code is WCE10, WCE20. Very easy to do. Ticketsmarter.com. Think smarter, ticket smarter. Don't forget to check out the Three Dog Thursday podcast. Check out the Bet US College Football Show. I've done those the last couple of days, Tuesday and Wednesday, every week, same time, 1 p.m. Eastern time on both of those days. Uh, so check those out as well, along with everything that we're doing over here, along with bettingcfb.com. It's a lot of content, a lot of stuff, but I certainly appreciate you guys. Jump in the comments. Of course, let me know what you think about these picks. I want to know what you guys are taking as well. Help me out. Hook me up. Uh, but put the comments in there, like the video, you guys know what's up, and subscribe if you hadn't done that already. All right, that is going to do it. Take care of yourself, take care of each other, God bless college football, and hopefully all of your tickets cash this week. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and follow me on Twitter, at GaryWCE. If you want to toss in a question, you can email me, Gary, at winningcureseverything.com. Make sure and hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.